Welcome back. Well, on tonight's edition of Let's Have It Out, our presenter is Ernst Roots. He is AfriForum's Deputy Chief Executive. He joins us now in studio for a preview. Welcome. Thank you How are much. you feeling ahead of your debut on ENTA as a presenter? Well, I'm really looking forward to it, and I think it's a, it's a wonderful concept. I've been watching the, uh, the shows where I think it started with the representatives of the political parties mm -hmm. uh, hosting. I think it's a good concept and it's so I've been in the studio before but to be interviewed and I've been grilled a few times here but uh, it's it's a completely different experience. So you'll be on the other side of the desk. Sitting on the other side yes. So very quickly for us uh, your guest tonight and what are some of the big issues you'll be discussing. So I'll be speaking with Gwen Nguenya who's the uh, head of policy for the DA the Democratic Alliance and Afri Forum is of course a civil rights organization and we focus on minority rights so the questions I want to ask Gwen is how does the DA position itself? We know the DA wants to win, so they want to get more black support. Uh, they want to get majority vote. But how does the DA, how will the DA balance uh, minority interest with the majority? And we do know that minority communities have traditionally supported the DA. And we also hear that some of them are becoming frustrated because they feel like the DA is sort of uh, leaving them behind or neglecting their interests. All right, well, all the very best to you. And Roots is our guest presenter on Let's Have It Out tonight. He is from AfriForum. All right, to this story we've been tracking for you throughout the evening, the longest total lunar eclipse of the century. That's unfolding there in the corner of your screen this evening. Now, several events are being held around the country, in fact, to view this spectacular celestial event. To explain what we're looking at, we're joined now by Kirby van Sale. He's an amateur astronomer who's hosting an event at the planetarium uh, in Johannesburg. Uh, Kobe, thanks very much for your time. Just give us, us uh, laymen, an explanation of what we're seeing unfold on our screens there. Good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us here at the Johannesburg Planetarium. The lunar eclipse taking place tonight is the longest eclipse that we're going to see in the 21st century. Uh, the totality, which is going to start happening now at about half past eight, a half past nine, will actually be a total eclipse of 103 minutes. The eclipse from start to finish is a total of six hours and 14 minutes. Uh, so yeah, we are very privileged to be down here in Southern Africa where we can see the longest eclipse of uh, the 21st century. So basically, Kirby, as soon as the eclipse reaches its, uh, once it's completed and the whole moon uh, is completely eclipsed, that will last, that event will last for almost four hours. Uh, the blood moon portion, uh, which is generally known as blood moon portion, which is the total eclipse, now that will be one hour and uh, 43 minutes, it's 103 minutes effectively, uh, starting now at uh, 9.30, and the uh, moon will start coming out of the shadow again, uh, what's known as the umbra shadow, uh, at about 13 minutes, uh, 13 minutes past 11. However, the total eclipse will only finish just after one tomorrow morning. Wow, that's incredible. So unlike other solar eclipses, I mean, we're viewing this on our screens. People have been told they can go out into their gardens, they can look up into the night sky. Unlike other eclipses, you don't need any special kind of gear. No, this is a lunar eclipse. Uh, it's very safe to use uh, by looking at it naked eye. You don't need to have any eclipse viewers. You can actually put a binocular uh, in front of your eyes, view it. You are looking at reflected sunlight. And especially when it goes into the Umbra shadow, we are blocking out quite a lot of light. At uh, 21 minutes past 10, the moon will actually be at its darkest point, which is in the center of the Umbra shadow. Um, and you will just be able to look up, look at the moon, no special equipment required. Yeah. Um, for the people here at Johannesburg Planetarium, they are fortunate. We do have a couple of scopes out. People can look at the moon through the telescopes as well. But honestly, you don't need anything special. So, Kirby, the longest eclipse of the century. What controls the duration of a lunar eclipse? The duration is controlled by a number of factors. Uh, the one is that the moon currently is the furthest away from Earth, which is at Apogee. Um, it means that uh, the moon normally travels between 360,000 kilometers to 405,000 kilometers um, away from Earth. At the moment, it's 405,000 kilometers away from Earth, uh, being known as a micro moon, which is the opposite of a super moon. The Earth is also casting a shadow, and this time of the year, winter time in the southern hemisphere and summertime in the northern hemisphere, the Earth is also the furthest away from the sun. So you have a very big shadow being cast behind Earth. If you look at the shadow 
from an outside point of view, it actually looks like a little cone. And the moon will now be moving through this cone of the shadow, um, starting now at half past nine. Uh, it makes it the long, one of the longest lunar eclipses because it's actually moving through the center of that cone. We have had uh, total lunar eclipses in the past, which only last a couple of minutes <coughs> because it basically graces the cone, uh, goes in, goes out again on the other side. This one will be moving through the center of the cone, and that gives us the total of 103 minutes of dark moon. Yeah, incredible. I mean, and it's also happening quite quickly. I think it was around 8 p.m. this evening that we started uh, seeing the start of the, the eclipse, uh, and now an hour and 20 minutes later, it's almost complete. It is correct, um, and like I said, 103 minutes in totality. Um, we are very fortunate because remember, the next eclipse that we are going to see from the southern African uh, area is only in 2025. Um, so the opportunity that we have here tonight is unbelievable. Yeah, it's incredible, and I was just doing some research. Apparently, the next total lunar eclipse uh, will be happening in 2019, I'm told, but we won't be able to see that one. That one's visible from North America, from North America in January. That's correct. January of 2019 will be the next eclipse. In fact, this eclipse that we are viewing tonight is the second lunar eclipse of this year. We didn't see the first one here from Southern Africa. It's part of a cycle of five eclipses, uh, two lunar eclipses and three uh, partial solar eclipses. Um, this happens <coughs> on a regular basis, but not visible from all over the world. Yeah. Lunar eclipses are uh, more frequently seen by more people because we can actually see, most of Africa can see tonight's uh, lunar eclipse. However, the sh uh, solar eclipses are more concentrated on a smaller area of, of the Earth. But I also just want to quickly point out two other things that is very interesting tonight. If you look up at the moon, that little red dot on the right hand side of the moon is actually the planet Mars. Now that's also a very interesting object in that Mars is also, at the moment, at its closest approach to Earth. Mars, therefore, actually appears the biggest that we will see it for a number of years to come again. Um, unfortunately, there was a bit of a dust storm on Mars a couple of weeks ago, and there's still a lot of dust in the sky, um, in the atmosphere of Mars, and therefore we can't actually see a lot of detail. But just imagine we have Mars at its closest approach to Earth. We have got its longest 21st century lunar eclipse happening. And then, don't throw away the, the Perseids meter shower. It started on the 17th of July, going to end on about the 24th of July, uh, August. So we might even be lucky and see a couple of shooting stars during the total eclipse of the moon. Wow, we're so incredibly spoiled for choice at this time of year. Kobe, for people who are trying to document uh, this event, taking photographs, is that possible? Is that just as easy as said and said as done? Uh, it is totally possible. People must just remember that because of the low light, they will have to have their camera on a tripod. Mm -hmm. uh, we also suggest that they use a center um, focused uh, light um, measurement, uh, centralized light, me light measurement, so that they can actually measure the light coming from the moon rather than the gray black sky. Otherwise, they will be overexposing the moon. So if they use a center based uh, light gathering, uh, they will be able to get very good pictures of the lunar uh, tonight. All right, some great advice there. Thanks very much uh, for that. Kirby van Sel is uh, an amateur astronomer joining us there from that event taking place at the planetarium in Johannesburg as uh, Joburgers and uh, other visitors take a look at how that lunar eclipse is unfolding. It is the longest total lunar eclipse of the century and it's visible from Southern Africa. Incredible. Well, that's where we leave it for the show for this evening. You've just got enough time, in fact, to get outside and see the moon completely covered by the Earth's shadow. Enjoy your sky watching tonight. Jane Dutton back with you on Monday night at 8 p.m. From me, Michelle Craig, take care. Good night. <laughs>